Hello and welcome to Dyson Demons. I'm Emma and in this video I'm going to show you another go at the art marines and uh, I have asked you guys what kind of art projects you'd like to see me try and tackle on a space marine and uh, you've suggested all sorts of cool things and uh, one of the things that a lot of people suggested was uh, pointillism and I thought that sounds really fun and I've been looking at different kinds of artworks and I thought um, I really like the idea of just using small points of colors uh, as a way of, uh, of doing a piece of art. Uh, but uh, there wasn't sort of a particular painting that I, uh, I wanted to try out in the Space Marine. So I decided why not just take the, um, the sort of the technique of, uh, of the points and apply it to a Space Marine, but just uh, using, well, all the colors of the rainbow. And uh, before we get to the painting, I just have a quick thing I'd like to say, um, because I have been painting stuff in the uh, rainbow color scheme before, and it, it usually ends up with a lot of people being really kind and really friendly and, and, and really nice uh, comments and stuff. But there will also often be people who are either directly hostile um, to the point of asking me to go kill myself because I paint uh, stuff in the color of the rainbow and also people saying well the rainbow that is like the lgbtq plus uh, symbol and so that's a political symbol and i want you to keep politics out of our hobby and to that i want to say that uh, to me the rainbow definitely symbolizes the lgbtq plus community but i do not see that as a political symbol uh, to me politics is stuff like, you know, we have political political parties debating things like tax reform or education or infrastructure. And those things I definitely don't want to see in the hobby. That would be, well, really, really boring. I don't I don't want to see I don't want us I, I don't want to see Games Workshop tackle, you know, tax debates or something in the hobby. That would just be awful. Um, but uh, the symbol of the rainbow and the LGBTQ plus community to me has nothing to do with politics like that. Uh, I see it as something related to, um, well, human rights, actually, uh, human dignity. And I think that that transcends politics. And so to me, the rainbow flag has nothing to do with politics. Also, on a personal note, I am a woman and I am ma married to another woman. So I'm myself a member of the LGBTQ plus community. And uh, to me, the uh, rainbow flag doesn't symbolize, symbolizes, uh, doesn't symbolize politics. It symbolizes, um, well, my family, my wife, my daughter, uh, and it symbolizes love, community, family. And I think that has, again, nothing to do with politics, but those are definitely values that should be more than welcome in the hobby space. So there you have it. Just a short note. I do not think uh, the rainbow flag has anything to do with politics. It's human rights. And I think uh, that that is appropriate anywhere. So uh, enough talking. Let's get to the painting. So I start off, as I often do, with a model that's been primed using the White Scars Primer. And I've decided to use some contrast paints as the basis for my dots or my points. Um, and I'm using here the uh, Blood Angels Red. And then I, I do a quick wet blend with the Yand and Yellow, also contrast paint. And I continue this style of painting all the way through the model. So here you can see the uh, warp lightning contrast paint being mixed again with the yand and yellow, just trying to build up the layers, but relatively quickly. And this is uh, this is supposed to be a quick wet blend, and I'm going to be covering the whole thing with points anyway or dots anyway. Uh, so it doesn't uh, it doesn't matter too much if it's uh, completely smooth, which it isn't. Then the warp lightning green is mixed with Talasar blue, also a contrast paint. And then the last layer of uh, blending is with the Talasar blue and Volopus pink, the last uh, contrast paint that I'm using. Uh, after this, I, I won't be naming each and every color I'm using, but I will have a card at the end of the video showing what colors went into what part of the miniatures. Uh, just to give you an overview, you could use all sorts of colors really, but this is just to give you an idea of what kind of colors I used. Then I uh, decided that instead of using a brush to make the uh, individual points, I would use uh, this uh, metal sculpting tool uh, because I thought that would um, that would both work 
really well, as you can see here, uh, but also because I thought I would pretty easily ruin a brush doing this. <laughs> and so I decided, to, I decided to go with the sculpting tool. You can see that I tried to build up the colors by adding a little bit of each color, all, both on the sort of main place where it's going to be, like the yellow, um, but I'm also adding a bit of yellow onto the green and onto the red to sort of make the colors blend into each other a little bit more smoothly so you don't just have like red uh, red paints isolated to one part of the model, but it sort of blends a little bit better. And I'm also trying to use uh, all sorts of different kinds of colors, so different greens and different yellows and so on, and both some that are darker and some that are lighter uh, to uh, give a bit of more um, feel that you have the texture going on and also just to give it more visual interest really. I have completely uh, thrown away the idea of doing any sort of naturalistic highlights or anything. This is purely a project where I am testing out a technique, testing out, testing out an idea and naturalism and where you would see light, hi light uh, hitting the model or would, where you would have uh, natural shadows that has just, um, I don't think that would be really feasible to apply to this model using this technique anyway. Um, it is actually relatively quick to do. Um, I was surprised by this. I think it took me a couple of hours painting like this, just adding these tiny little dots. And I don't know if you can sense this from the video, but it really doesn't take a lot of skill to do this. I am literally just dipping the sculpting tool in paint and then putting it onto the model. The only trick is not to get too much paint on the sculpting tool, otherwise you'll just get a big blob of paint. But even if you do that, uh, which I did a couple of times, you can just go over it with other colors with the sculpting tool and it'll look just fine. You can't tell at all. Um, so uh, this is actually really fun. Again, I really like doing these art marines just because it's really liberating, not worrying about um, trying to live up to a sort of idea you have in your mind of what uh, what you should be painting like or how smooth your blends are supposed to be or whatever. This is just having fun, trying stuff out and seeing where it takes you basically. Besides using darker and lighter colors, I also tried mixing in different types of hues or um, sort of degrees of saturation. Uh, again, just to make the model a little bit more appealing to look at and also just because it was uh, Again, interesting to see what it would look like and how it would work out, basically. Um, I could not help myself, though I had to add a little bit of the uh, fluorescent paints that I usually use, and just because it really makes stuff pop. I perhaps think that on this particular model, perhaps it wasn't the best idea uh, at all times, just because they take perhaps oh, too much of your attention away from the rest of the colors. But still, it was fun to try out. Then I take some Black Legion Contrast paint and I do a dark black outline on all the sort of major shapes separating the lower leg from the upper leg and um, separating the foot from the lower leg and so on. And just to make it uh, a little bit more um, easy to see what's actually going on and I just like, I just like to that it looks a little bit more cleaned up uh, when you do it like that. So uh, I usually do that on these art marines and I did this on, on this one as well. So here you can see the finished result and um, I'm not sure you can, I mean you can see the dots and you can see the points. I'm not sure it really looks a lot like sort of pointillism as such, but it was definitely a fun way of doing uh, armor and also a, uh, I mean, a more controlled way of uh, of doing the uh, the camouflage than what you saw on, for instance, the uh, the Pollock Space Marine, if you've watched that video. So you can see here are the fluorescent paints glow in the dark, but it really looks silly under a UV light. <laughs> it, lo it looks like he's got some very alien measles or something. And uh, here you can see the different colors I used. And again, as I said, 
these are, it's not necessary to use the exact same colors as the ones I used. Uh, these are just to give you an idea of, uh, of what colors were on this particular model. Uh, so you can try to replicate it if you want to, but you can use any sort of colors for this. Um, I don't think there is a, a set standard of uh, pointillism um, uh, colors you have to use. So that was what I wanted to show you today, but before I leave, I'd like to give a shout out to my amazing patrons. I just launched, launched my Patreon. And so thank you to Thomas Masson, Andre Correa, Anthony Paul Castro, TJ Kupiak, Mando Project, Starcon85 and Espear for supporting my channel. I am really very grateful. If you would like to also become a patron, I'll leave a link to that in the show notes. So uh, thank you so much for watching guys. And remember, if you want to stay up to date on my painting project, you can also follow me as Dyson Demons on Twitter and Instagram. Also, if uh, you like this video, I of course would very much appreciate a like, a comment, and perhaps even if you wanted to subscribe to the channel as well. Uh, also, if you have suggestions or ideas or anything you, for stuff you'd like to see me cover in future videos, you are more than welcome to uh, tell me that in the comments too. So uh, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!